Hello Zebraherd and welcome back to Plants vs. Zombies. In the last episode we tackled World 2 and now we're gonna be heading back into the adventure going on World 3. And hopefully everything works out. As you can see we are now in our backyard. It looks like the zombies gave up attacking your front yard. Now they're trying your backyard. And, on top, and to top it all off, you can't even use your mushrooms because they'll fall asleep during the day. Yep, the mushrooms are nocturnal. Well, isn't that just dandy? I guess so. Maybe we could get a dandelion to help make up for that. Unfortunately, we don't. Anyways, yeah, none of these shrooms will work right now. I mean, we could p take them, but it would not be a good idea because they would just sleep. Um, but we do have a pool to worry about. So we're gonna place these lily pads which we could put plants on top of them. So for now, I'll try sort of a basic combo just to sort of survive. Um, and then maybe we'll do snow peas. That seems like pretty affordable. But this really chops down the amount of plants we can use for now. We will see the mushrooms pop back up later as more nighttime levels do surface and beyond that we'll have other ways to use the mushrooms. But for now, no mushrooms, which means things are a bit more simple, but also that makes things difficult for, you know, more complex strategies that might might have been reliable here to start World 3 on. I would say this is where the game gets tough. Um, as you can see, there's gonna be less room to place sunflowers for now. It's gonna be more expensive to place them because we'll have to place a 25 cost lily pad over it if we wanna do it that way. I suggest maybe not. It might actually be good to balance it out a different way. Of course, two rows of sunflowers is typically, um, one, two, three, four, five, or is it? Yeah, it's six rows. Of course, there's six lanes in PPZ. Um, so, my suggestion is that you actually just do uh, six on the top, six on the bottom, which will also make 12. We we'll also have enough to place that pea shooter, so that should be fine. Um, yeah, just like this, and then they do the same thing on the bottom. Um, I feel like that's a quicker, more affordable way to get these sunflowers out instead of trying to place them on the lily pads. It will leave uh, those lanes a little more vulnerable because you know the zombies can get to the plants more quickly because they're pushed out farther. But I think overall it's worth it because you'll see that there's not as much pressure put on these lanes eventually because of all the plants moving down the water lane. I don't know uh, how much action we'll get at first though. Okay, so uh, we'll get that there. We'll start getting more pea shooters out. But this, like I said, this is probably where the game gets a bit more difficult for most people, me included. It's gonna take a lot more effort to keep in front of these zombies and not just you know easily destroy them all. I don't know if we're gonna be getting the entire World 3 done in today's episode, because like I've said before, this is where it gets a lot longer to get through everything. So uh, I might only do like half of it to uh, suffice for that. Okay, so we wanna start putting some melee pads down. They restore relatively quickly but things can get a bit risky. Since we don't really have anything creative when it comes to the plants, we just wanna put a walnut out whenever we can. We do have the cherry bomb, but things get really awful, but for now, I think things are actually going pretty well. The cone head was a bit of a risk, but since we got the second pea shooter and the walnut, we're fine. Okay, we're doing pretty good. I'm gonna put that there. And those lily pads will be helpful. It's pretty simple. You can't put a lily pad on, on top of a lily pad. That'd be awesome if you could. I don't know what the purpose would be, but hey, look at that. We got a zombie in the water and he has a little rubber ducky. <laughs> He's so cute. Has a little patch in it. I guess maybe it got a hole in it at some point and he cleaned it up. Isn't that great? What a get great uh, rubber ducky owner. Okay, so there goes another one. I guess it's not rubber, it's inflatable. Rubber duckies are the things you put in bathtubs. Ah, same difference. Okay, so uh, yeah. Water lanes definitely mix with this game a lot. There are gonna be a lot more water zombies we have to deal with, and we get a number of water plants that'll be fun to deal with as well. But in the meantime, we just sort of have to survive with the lily pad, which the lily pad is super helpful anyways. We could have put some flowers up on here, but I really don't think it's necessary for this level. We're actually just about finished with it. So I didn't even need the snow peas, it looks like. Because if things get worse, I do have the, the cherry bomb. I was gonna call it a cherry bean bomb. That's not what it is. A uh, huge wave of zombies is approaching. Well, come on zombies. Hit me with your best shot. I don't know where they're going to be the most. They're usually near the flag bearer, bearer but ooh, this is not good actually. But I have a lot of sun, so I can deal with this. I can just slow those guys down. Unfortunately, you can't put a lily pad down and then put a potato mine on top of it. I know, awful, right? What you can do though, if you wanna do something a little bit different, 
Just put a walnut on, on top of the lily pad. You would think they would just sort of push it off, but they don't, they try to eat through it. And look at this, we get ourselves a new plant. It's not aquatic, but it will be very helpful in a lot of situations. It is the squash. It costs 50 and it squashes zombies. Pretty simple plant. All right, back into the backyard we go. And we see a number of things. I see a uh, newspaper zombie. I see a ducky tube zombie and the football zombie. This is where the squash can be very useful because it can take care of a lot of zombies in one hit. But why is it more useful than say the cherry bomb? Well, it costs a third of what that does. Same thing with the chomper. Um, and we'll do an interesting combo, I think. We'll, we'll start with the sunflower. We need a lily pad. And then we'll do like potato mine, walnut, chomper, squash, and pea shooter. That should be pretty decent. Anything that goes in our way, we should be able to handle just fine. Um, okay, so we'll start with the sunflower. And just like how uh, the chomper works, the squash can only attack the thing that is right next to it. So either if it's one space behind it or one space in front of it, that's all that the squash can attack. Uh, unlike the chomper who can only eat what's one space in front of it. So it is useful to deal with its proximity in one way or another. I'm gonna put a potato mine there, that should be good. Not worth using a squash for him if a potato mine can take him out. But the potato mines are just for a good early start and then we'll work on getting the pea shooters out. Okay, put that there. And that potato mine's gonna blow soon enough. Get rid of that guy. But as you can tell, you know, the doors are opening up on more strategies and more ways to defend because now it's just like we always have to choose, okay, what plants do I want for this situation and that situation? And it's working out pretty well for us. Because I feel like, you know, the second half of this world is when things really pick up on the terms of, uh, you know, all the different strategies you can use. Because you just get a lot of unique plants, right? Like the squash can be helpful for a lot of situations, but also not so helpful for other ones because of its slow respawn or recharge time. Hmm, I might wanna start getting lily pads out and pea shooters and all that kind of stuff. The chompers are probably gonna go on column one, two, three, four, five, I guess five. Five should be good. We don't really need it to, to extend too far for this, for this level, I don't think. Okay. And we'll probably have squashes in front of the walnuts just in case. I think that's probably a good combo. We might not just need to play squashes when we need to, you know? We might not even have to play them most of the time. They might not even be have, having to be something where we have to put like a whole row of them out. Instead, we just put them out when we need them. I'm not really paying too much attention to some things here, so these zombies are getting a little too close. Chomper got him though, that's good. Chomper's restore so quick, it's so useful. But now I'm a little low on sun. And I gotta start getting ready because these uh, zombies are gonna start popping up down here on the water lane as well. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare a chomper for that newspaper zombie, I think like is our best bet. I mean, of course, a squash can be fantastic against him as well. But you know, squashes, chompers, sort of have their similarities, but their own benefits. Of course, once a squash is used once, it goes away. That's sort of its big drawback as well. That's why it's sort of cheap. Hey, look at that, we got a present. Mini games unlocked, play them from the main menu. We'll do that after we're done the main game, but at this rate, that'll be pretty soon. We've been making our way through the main game really quickly. Keep in mind, it's only the third episode. Uh, so it'll only be a couple episodes until we're done the main story mode. And then we'll have plenty of other things to do, don't, don't get me wrong. But uh, for now, the chompers are getting some good work done. I'm gonna put one there. And now we can start getting a pea shooter there. And we could put chompers on the lily pads, like I've said before, and that might be what we do just because it's fun. <laughs> okay, and we could put squashes on the water as well. But I don't think I wanna do that just yet. It's a little expensive to do that for the little use it has because just the things being put on the water lanes aren't that uh, threatening at the moment. At least the zombies coming at us from the water lanes, I mean. Okay, so put a walnut there and we're doing really, really well. I think I'm going to Hmm, what should I do now? I guess we could start getting a lily pad set up for the walnuts in front of the chompers in the water. One thing that a lot of people don't notice, and I remember when I first streamed this game, a lot of people pointed it out like, hey, I never noticed that. The lily pads actually have little eyes. If you see the little yellow dots on them, that's actually their eyeballs. And it's sort of weird, cause like, I've never, like I, I, I never noticed that at first either. I'm like, whoa. See, we need to make sure we have good defense because as you can see, uh, there's a huge wave of zombies coming in. We have no way to protect against them except for just the power of our plants, and so far they're doing a pretty good job. 
Maybe I should have had an extra OP shooters down there in the water. Oh, here we go. We'll use the squash against this guy. So it's like, hmm, and bump. I love how it's just like he makes a little, hmm, what is that? I don't like it, I want to squish it. Goodbye. The squash is another plant that does make appearances, of course, in other PvZ games, in PvZ 2, of course, in Garden Warfare. He's not in Garden Warfare 1, I don't think. Actually, he might be. I think he's in Garden Ops in Garden Warfare 1. You get to protect him sometimes. In Garden Warfare 2, he's actually a boss you can take on as zombies. Uh, in PvZ Heroes, he's actually a, a trick where you can squash a zombie. Um, no matter what the zombie is, it's a pretty expensive card. Of course, I have many, many videos on PvZ Heroes if you're curious about that. Actually, the squash restores relatively quickly. We already had enough. Uh, the, the squash was already ready. So this guy's being annoying. I could just replace his chomper. There you go. No risk. Because we're doing pretty well. As you can see, we have 1,400. So at this point, I don't need as many sunflowers as I do. I can start replacing them for pea shooters because I don't need 14, 1,300 sun. That's usually the strategy I do. A lot of people don't seem to do that and they just sort of let it sit there and earn up thousands of sun when they don't really need it. I don't suggest that because you know it's just unnecessary. I'm gonna go ahead and put a potato mine there. Um, he's gonna eat it the moment I place it. Okay, luckily he didn't finish it off. But yeah, things are looking pretty good right now. I don't think we're gonna have any worries. There might be a gigantic wave of zombies and that could be a problem, but in the meantime, I think things will just go fine. Because we're still sticking around 1400 sun. We're still earning more than we're spending with everything we got here. Okay. I'm gonna place another potato mine when they're available. But I might just do another row of pea shooters now. Because, like, what else am I gonna do with my time? We do have that last round coming up pretty quick, though. Got it. Okay. I'm having so much fun playing through this game, though. I'm glad that uh, I found, you know, a good opportunity to play through it. With you guys, you know, it's uh, once again, I've, I've talked about it in the first episode. Plants vs. Zombies is now over nine years old. The franchise itself, not just this game, I mean, obviously, it started with this game, but beyond that, it's, you know, the entire franchise is now nine years old. It's pretty gosh darn cool. I mean, it was fun celebrating it last year. Last year, there was a lot of awesome Garden Warfare 2 free stuff that came out. I'm hoping, I'm recording this before uh, the first episode even releases, but uh, I'm hoping that the same happens in Garden Warfare 2 this year. We get a lot of free stuff. That was a lot of fun last year. Okay, so a huge wave of zombies is coming on up. We're gonna probably use some squashes to get rid of them. I might be able to place like a preemptive squash now. That way it restores, so I have another one to get rid of that dude over that way. Maybe I should place one in the water. Maybe, basically, I shouldn't have placed that squash. If things get scary, though, I just do this. <laughs> Isn't that perfect? Probably shouldn't have even gotten rid of that chomper. He squashed somebody, he looked like a conehead. Yeah, I definitely wanna show that you can use a, uh, a squash in the water, not only that, but you, a squash can squash things from behind them. So what I'm gonna do is place this here, and he's like, oh no, he didn't do it that time. He has to be pretty close behind him is the problem. Oh well, <laughs> how silly of me. But he can squash something behind him, it has to just be pretty close. Uh, and there we go, ooh, another brand new pea shooter. As you can see, there are three little pea heads on him because he is the Three Peter for 325 sun. He shoots th peas in three lanes. So it's not like the repeater where it shoots two peas down one single lane. Instead, it shoots one pea in three surrounding lanes. So if you put one on the second top and the second bottom um, lanes, you'd be able to cover every single lane. Isn't that crazy? Anyway, hey, wanna buy an extra seed slot? It'll cost you 5,000, but you'll be able to choose eight seeds per level instead of seven. Sure. I mean, what else am I gonna spend the money on? All right, so here we go. Is this gonna be another mini game, or is this just another, another round? It looks like another round. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the sunflower, the pea shoot, or the three Peter, for sure. Maybe we could go super duper risky with this. Something like that might work pretty well. Hmm. We do have this extra slot now. I think I'm gonna dedicate that to the Snow Pea because we haven't used him in a little while. I think that'll be a fun combo. The Three Peter's a lot of fun, especially when we get some upgrades later, some new plants later that'll be super duper helpful. But yeah, since it'll shoot in three lanes, it'll be crazy useful to like demonstrate. Like if we put a Three Peter here, they'd be shooting in this lane, this lane, and this lane. And then we put another Three Peter here, this lane, this lane, this lane. So we could cover basically the entire game like that, obviously. It's super expensive, it's hard to get to that point, but it's still possible. 
and that'll be our goal for this round, especially since we do have two waves of survive, two uh, huge waves of zombies. Okay, so far so good. Place that there. And we're gonna do our typical, you know, three on the top, three on the bottom for the sunflowers. And boop. We already have enough for another sunflower if we wanted. We just gotta wait for them to be available. Okay, so this guy's coming up quick on the bottom. They're starting to throw sort of kind of two zombies at once instead of one. Luckily, we should still be able to just put out the uh, potato mine and then I'll deal with it just fine. If we have extra sun though, the best way we can use it is just to start putting um, lily pads out. I might put some sunflowers in the water this time just for some extra sun. Uh, but we're gonna wanna get a lot of sun out soon if we wanna uh, get those three Peters out anytime relatively soon. For now, the potato mines are being super duper helpful, but soon enough that's going to change. I'm gonna wait for this. This potato mine should be able to deal with this zombie, but then after that, chances are very high we're gonna have to worry about the three Peters, so that's what I'm trying to get up right now. And it is working out pretty well. We already have 250 sun, and I haven't even built up all of our sunflowers. Okay, here's our first repeater. I'm gonna put them there. Maybe it would have been smarter to put them on the bottom, because I don't know where the next zombie's gonna pop up. We have the potato mine nice and ready. Might not even need it. It's a gonna depend. Okay, we did need it. Worth a while then. Okay, so I might need another potato mine for this guy down there. But you can imagine having a lot of three Peters can make things pretty crazy. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. Actually, maybe I should just do snow pea against you. Maybe that's the smartest possible thing. I'll do a potato mine against this cone head because I think I'm gonna need it. All right. Things are working out okay so far. I'll say that much. I definitely will be putting some flowers in the water. We'll put ice peas there. And then this is where we'll start putting the walnuts is in this lane. So for you, sir. But for right now, I'll focus on the snow peas just because I feel like they'll be a little bit better. Now, unlike the normal pea shooter, or yeah, the pea plant, like obviously the pea shooter is supposed to be a pea plant, the snow pea is also a type of pea. I don't think the same can be said about the repeater or the three peter. They're just, you know, in the game. <laughs> I would love to hear about what your favorite plant in real life that is in PVC, right? Like maybe you really, really like squash, like you eat squash all the time. Or maybe you eat a lot of cherries. Cherries are delicious, oh my gosh. I'm gonna make myself hungry, I haven't had lunch. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have a peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> okay, so, uh. Let's get another snow pea out that way. So this guy's sort of taking a bit of a beating. We'll put a thing there. I haven't been putting out as many sunflowers as I should be. Been sort of zoning out, but I'm glad we got the two three Peters out there pretty well. Okay, I think that's about all the sunflowers I want and need. But this way we have the water lane protected without even having to put anything there. You know, that's fantastic. Or at least putting any kind of like offensive plant there. We will still be putting things there as you see because now we're covering things doubly, which is just crazy. That's just a lot of uh, pea pods going out there. So we already got our fourth three Peter. We could also do another set of them, which I most likely will. And I could put them on the top and bottom lanes, but it's not really worth it sometimes because you are missing out um, on one of them. So I feel like it's just better just to put like an extra snow pea or something there instead. Okay, so we'll put you there. I don't think I'm gonna need the cherry bomb. I really don't think so. Instead, we're gonna work on putting the snow pea there, and uh, we're doing good. Okay, so here comes a brand new zombie. As you can see, he hides under the water, which means we can't hit him at the moment, and that's a big danger. So what I'm gonna do is do this and put a squash there. And it doesn't matter how deep you are in that water, that squash is gonna go right down with you. <laughs> see ya, squash. Okay, so that's not too bad. I'm going to uh, wait it out and put you there. It'll probably be worth it to put some walnuts in the, in the center water lanes very soon, but in the meantime, I feel like we got a nice little strategy going on. I don't wanna get rid of any sunflowers just yet because they're really helping me afford these three Peters, but soon enough I'm gonna be able to start getting rid of some of them, which will be good. I mean, I'm probably just gonna put more three Peters over them, which will be a bit expensive, but totally worth it. We almost have enough for the walnuts on the water lane. But look at all the pea, pea pods coming out of all these three Peters and the snow peas and stuff. Maybe I should put some, you know what, we're gonna do that. Because this guy will pop out in front of the first plant he sees. As you can see, he's just like, I think he's called the snorkel zombie. He just starts eating, he doesn't have much health. Oh, I missed out on the coin, oh, that's a shame. Luckily, we already just bought our new upgrade. 
Oh no, I did not mean to put that there. Oh well. It's just extra stuff for them to eat through. That's sort of a good strategy against the snorkel zombies if you just simply want them to pop up. Because once they pop up out of the water, I don't think they ever go back in. It's not like they eat a plant and go back under the water. I think they stay out of the water for good. Okay, we'll do that. This is our last wave though. I don't think we're gonna need too much more than this. Uh, soon enough we'll be running into, I think, three huge waves instead of two. Oh gosh, that's a bit of a problem. They do pop out out of the water literally anywhere. So for now, go ahead and get rid of that. Also, when did I put snow peas? Oh yeah, that's right, I was putting snow peas here, not three peters. Probably shouldn't have dug up a three peter with how expensive it is, but hey, we all that just fine, I'm not worried. But that's sort of a big risk is that zombies can pop up anywhere in the water during the huge final waves, so you need to pay extra attention for any kind of risk. And here we go, it looks like we get ourselves yet another water plant. It is a 25 cost plant named the Tangle Kelp, aquatic plant that pulls a zombie underwater. So it's sort of kind of like a potato mine for the water. Okay, so back to our backyard. There's very loud wind outside, I'm sorry if you can hear that. Uh, hmm. Let's start with the sunflower. And we'll definitely use our brand new plant. I don't think we're gonna go for the three Peter this time though. I feel like it's gonna be a little bit of a risk. Especially I see, um, of course, the snorkel zombie, but more than that, this newspaper zombie, the pole vaulting zombie, and the buckethead zombie are all quite risks that I feel like can be well handled by the chomper. So we'll try something like that, and then we'll just keep it safe with a pea shooter. I think that'll be good. Okay, what do you got for me, zombies? I don't think much. I'm gonna drink some tea really quick. All right, so mostly the same strategy here. Three on the top, three on the bottom for the sunflowers. And then we'll move on to other things. Already got enough for our first potato. I'm gonna put that there. Nice stuff. But we can put these tangle cups down whenever we want to. Right now it's a matter of saving sun, so I won't, but uh, that's pretty good. Hmm. Oh, and look at this. Okay, this is our first level with the three uh, huge waves. I caught it a little early, didn't I? <laughs> but yeah, this that means this is gonna be a very long level. Like I said, world three is when it takes a bit longer to get through the world, so we're just gonna probably break it up in the multiple episodes. We're gonna try to go to world three five, or level three five today. So this level and then another one, and we'll be all wrapped up for today's episode. So another potato mine for you, sir. Another potato mine for you. Don't put a pea shooter there. So I'm sorry if I am sticking to the same strategy, it's just we we really got the amount of strategies we had chopped down because of the lack of mushrooms. But that's changing with the three Peters and stuff. Very cool. I'm excited for a plant that should be coming up sometime this world. I'm almost positive it's this world. The plants get a lot more obscure from here on out as well. Very specific situations, uh, depending on what zombies may be coming to ease your brains. I'm gonna keep playing the lily pads just to benefit me for later. Okay, have enough for a pea shooter there. Another lily pad. But yeah, back to my question earlier. What plants that are in Plants vs. Zombies do I like to eat in real life? I mean, there are some, obviously some of these plants you don't wanna eat, like sunflowers. You don't wanna eat sunflowers, but you would love to eat sunflower seeds, right? Like sunflower seeds are really tasty. Oh, I didn't mean to put that there, I'm a dingus. Uh, peas are good for you. Uh, they're not my favorite vegetable, but they're pretty good. Cherries, like I said, are a delicious fruit. I like to have them with ice cream. Uh, I would not, I, I mean, I guess I eat walnuts. Not really, I mean, I have peanut butter in my PB&J that I'm gonna have for lunch after this, oh boy. Wrapping that conversation back around. Okay, so is he gonna be able to take care of this dude? Maybe I should have thought about this. No, I placed it in the wrong spot. Oh, that's embarrassing. Oh gosh, get him, come on, get him, get him. Uh-oh, this is a problem. Okay, we got him, good job, pea shooter, you make me proud. That was really awkward on me. Okay, well, it should be fine, especially if I put that there. I'm not playing so well right now. I have 325 sun. I'm really just not being smart. Doo, 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 doo. Luckily the pole vault zombie showed up in the same exact lane, so the, hopefully the same thing will happen again there. But for now, I'm gonna start putting some pea shooters in the water lanes because they will be helpful there, get more lily pads out that way. No, you better not. You better not eat that chomper, you jerk. Wow, that guy stunk. 
I don't know if he'll pull vote over the Chomper. I don't know if he actually has the ability to, but I'm trying to be defensive about it, trying to be uh, worrisome, because if not, he's gonna eat that pea shooter and basically eat to our lawnmower, which I do not want. I have not died once in this playthrough so far, and I want to keep it that way throughout the entire game. Because that would make me feel cool. Okay, that should be pretty good. I want to have two rows of uh, pea shooters in the water lane. Huge wave of zombies are approaching already. That was really quick. That's sort of something you'll notice about the levels that have three waves, or three huge waves, is that the first wave comes up pretty unexpectedly quickly. It gets a little concerning. But I do have the cherry bomb for where it might be unpleasant, and I feel like it might be unpleasant right there. Okay. Was that really worth it? I suppose so. Don't you dare eat that chomper, man. Leave those chompers alone. What do they do to you? Okay, so I'm so glad we have a, an available chomper for that top lane. We never use the actual seaweed, but we'll have plenty of chances to. Okay, so let me go ahead and put our last pea shooter there. Still keep on getting lily pads out this way, because I'm gonna wanna have to put walnuts on those. Yeah, things are turning out pretty well. I'm gonna start removing some uh, sunflowers in turn for pea shooters, just so that we have a little bit of extra firepower. But at this rate, we should be good. I'm gonna put some seaweed there for the snorkel zombie. That was perfect timing. That was excellent timing. Everything was just amazing. Okay, so he's gonna jump, and then he's gonna get jumped. That's what you get. Wait, here, we're, we're about to see the demise of the snorkel zombie. It just gets dragged right under. And just like the potato mine, after that, they're gone. You have to plant another one. The good thing about the tangle kelp, I always call it seaweed, uh, or whatever it is, spike weed. But the good thing about the tangle kelp is that uh, there's no need for it to charge up like the potato mine. It's just instantly available as soon as you need it. So that's good against, you know, like an overwhelming cone head. No, that's bad. You know what, I know what's gonna happen here. This is why I need more rows of pea shooters out now. So let's get started with that, shall we? Because we have 600 sun. We can afford all the pea shooters already. And then some. So that guy actually got taken out before he reached the tangle cup, which is good. But this guy might just make him pop up like this because I don't want him to get rid of that lily pad. Oh geez, I got rid of the wrong plant there. Oh, that stinks. I was trying to get rid of the uh, sunflower so I could put a pea shooter over it. I ended up getting rid of the pea shooter to put a pea shooter over it. I'm a silly zebra, aren't I? Okay, there are more and more zombies showing up. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. And uh, we are doing all right so far. The potato mines I'm basically going to use at this point for anti pole vault zombies. I think that's sort of the best strategy with them. And it's just nice to have them around. I'm gonna go ahead and place one now in attempt to be prepared for the upcoming uh, super huge wave that we got going on. This chomper's gonna deal with this guy, no problem. I might wanna, now that we've gotten walnuts up in every lane, I might wanna do some repairing to the walnuts because some of these guys are really beaten up. Poor things. Might as well just, you know, tell them they can go to their early retirement, get some new walnuts out here. So okay, so here's another super huge wave. I wanna be careful about where I put this. I think that this is a better spot than that one. And then potato mine right there so you can hop over that. Look at all those coins and sun. Awesome. Nice is another 50 coins. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do anything about this other potato mine guy. I just might make him jump over a sunflower because it's really worth it. Okay, so more pea shooters. I need more pea shooters. All right, at this point I was, I mean, what could I have changed about this strategy that might have been better? I don't really know. Like maybe I could have gotten a snow piece instead of pea shooters, but things would have been a little bit slower on the uptake. I probably didn't need cherry bombs to be honest with you. I could have just switched that out for snow peas, and that would have been really helpful against the uh, the uh, pole vaulting zombies more than uh, just replacing their chomper is. At the same time, these levels are still easy enough that we can just replace the chompers and things work fine. I'm about to replace the last of my sunflowers. I really don't need them at the moment because as the sun's falling naturally, I already have a built up amount of sun. At this point, I just need to survive with the firepower I have until uh, until I can use more cherry bombs on the uh, super huge waves. So yeah, I really don't think we're gonna be using 650 sun anytime soon. Maybe I should have kept some, some sunflowers just in case we get some uh, chompers eaten. 
But I think we're gonna just earn that up just fine from the sun falling from the sky. Cause at this rate, I'm done placing plants. This is a weird looking backyard though. Just with a, how many pea shooters do we have out in the field right now? Eight on the top, eight on the bottom, that's 16. And then another four, 20 pea shooters right here. Isn't that crazy? I'm gonna go ahead and do something about you. Cause I don't like the fact that you're trying to attack my, uh, my friend. My uh, chomper friend. It is so cool to you know talk about and think about how some of these characters evolve throughout the other PVC games. Of course, you know the pea shooters they get a variant or they get a class, an entire class in Garden Warfare Two and Garden Warfare One. Um, they are a type of hero in PVC heroes. You know, Green Shadow, the pea shooter, and then same thing for Chomper. He gets his own uh, Garden Warfare variant and his own PVC heroes character with Chompzilla, and then the Walnut has no uh, playable character in Garden Warfare, but he gets spawned in by the Cactus, who we'll see in this game later, and uh, is a playable hero in PvZ Heroes as well, Knight. So it's just cool how these, you know, plants evolve, and it makes me think, you know, so much has changed since this game, you know? At first, PvZ was, oh yeah, the PvZ little, you know, tower defense game, but now it's not just that. PvZ is a franchise with tower defense and card games and shooters, so it's like, what are we gonna see next for PvZ? I'm really excited to see. You know, I've said for a while, I think it'd be very fun to see a Plants vs. Zombies carding game, just because I feel like, you know, what does Mario Kart have? Mario Kart has a whole bunch of recognizable characters riding fun carts in fun environments. Well, PVZ already has the funny characters down, um, and PVZ already has tons of fun environments throughout all of its games, so I feel like it's just a perfect candidate for some kart racing action. And same thing with like a Mario Party type PVZ game. Anyways, we did an excellent job getting rid of these guys. I'm just gonna make you get rid of you and then to finish you off, just do that. Awesome, and we get a key. Can we just get into the car and drive away? That sounds like a better idea than just staying in the same house all the time, right? Now you can visit Crazy Dave's shop with Crazy Dave's car key, or maybe we could just take his car. Hey, you found my car key. You know what that means. Crazy Dave's twiddly dinkies is open for business. Huh, have a look, see if you can't find something you like. Okay, so instead of driving away, we're just gonna buy things out of his car. Our prices are unbelievable. Also, probably the only place we can buy these. So we can get nine sea slots for $20,000. That's not too helpful. What is helpful are these. These are pool cleaners, and they add an extra line of defense with levels with a pool. So you might have noticed that our lanes that are on grass, of course, they have the lawn mowers, but if things got through the water lane, there's no lawn mowers protecting them. This changes that and will give us basically the version of lawn mowers, pool cleaners that will get rid of all the zombies in the water lane. There's also a number of other things you can actually purchase plants, as you can see, but they're sort of different than your average plant. Um, these are upgrades that you can play on already existing plants on the field to upgrade them. What do you know? You know if it's an upgrade, if it has a purple background instead of the normal tannish color for the uh, seed packet. Not gonna get any of those right now because they are super duper expensive. Usually you can't afford these until you're done the main story anyways, but we will eventually showcase them. For now, let's go ahead and spend our remaining 200 coins on this rake. As you can see, the garden rake takes out the first zombie that steps on it, it lasts for three levels. So let's go ahead and buy that bad boy, just for fun, just to showcase it. I usually never use this thing. Funny thing about the zombie pro process, sometimes it makes them come out real little, like real little and real mean. Defend your shins. What? Are these tiny zombies gonna kick our shins? Okay. Oh, and it's a conveyor belt level. Okay, so you can see there's a little rake right there, and the zombie should walk on top of it, and I'll, well, you'll see what happens. Okay, so we got lots of plants coming in, and these guys are not fun to deal with, but look at this dude. Donk, it just takes up the first zombie. Not so useful in this level. If I knew this level was coming up, I wouldn't have bought it right away. So we're gonna have to defend against these guys one way or another. Right now, I'm not really getting too much. Okay, I don't wanna have to use cherry bombs against these guys, but right now I don't have too many other options. I took care of a huge chunk of them, but here we go, here are some pea shooters. Oh gosh, look at that little all star go. He's like, I'm gonna make the team, coach, I'm gonna make the team. <laughs> what a cutie. Okay, go ahead and do that. We don't have much firepower coming to us right now. I definitely need to put this in front of that because I don't think their eating power is deduced all that much. It is hard to survive this because of that. Okay, I'm definitely gonna be cherry bombing, I think, this situation. Maybe they take more damage, but I think they eat just as quickly. As you can see, that walnut is getting destroyed. 
I might have to like double up on layers of walnut. And I said, like, wow, why are there no plants? Like, this is not enough. I really need some for the, the water lane right now and I'm not getting any and it's really, really concerning. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. Oh gosh, this is a problem. This is just a straight up problem. Why am I not getting anything? I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna put this, ooh, hard to say, I think here. Okay. This is a major problem. I'm not getting any plants I can actually use to attack these little dudes. And we're about to run into a huge wave, so I'd rather not use a chili, not a chili bomb, you know what I mean. Um, okay, now I can use the cherry bombs. Boom, get rid of you guys. I need something for the water lanes pronto. I'm not really getting, look at this poor walnut. He's like so sad. All right, I'm gonna get rid of you. Luckily, let's see how many hits it takes to get rid of the zombie. Three hits, so it's really not much. But man, oh man, is it hard to get to this point, because it gives you nothing. Okay, so here's the first scary wave of uh, zombies. I'm gonna hold on to these cherry bombs for as long as physically possible because they will be more useful later than they are now. Um, oh man, we got more uh, scuba zombies showing up. I'm gonna put this here. Okay, no, he ate through that walnut. Here, we got two pea shooters out. That should make it easier. Come on, come on, I finally got a lot of cherries. I don't wanna have to use a bunch of them. There's so many zombies and they're all so tiny. Oh no. Okay, um, I gotta go ahead and put a second pea shooter here, because there are a lot of snorkel zombies popping up. I think they get taken out in like two hits, which is pretty funny. Maybe even just one. Hard to tell. They just, they don't have much health. Not much going for them right now, which is fine with me. I gotta go ahead and get rid of this. Boom, that's a lot of zombies taken out. Okay, got that there. And get this here. We're doing okay. I have these, uh, cherries for when I really need them, which may be soon, may not be. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, okay, we can start working on our third row of pea shooters, which will be great there. I'm gonna go ahead and use this now, boom. Just because that was a lot of all stars. Get that there, and then get that there. Okay, we're on our last huge wave. It's the final wave. Can things work out our way? I can only hope. We got four cherry bombs. That should be enough. I'm just gonna have to time everything as well as possible. So put this right here, and then put this right here. And that's everything, and we get ourselves a chili pepper. Well, would you look at that? This is the jalapeno. Jalapeno? I think that's how it's pronounced. 125 sun destroys an entire lane of zombies. So instead of the cherry bomb, which sort of explodes things in a square radius, this only does one lane. So it doesn't matter if it's in the neighboring lanes, that won't help. Um, it's only straight down. And this will be helpful against a specific type of zombie that we'll run into in another episode. Definitely not this episode, because we are all finished up for today. We will be continuing on with World 3 in the next episode. I hope you are excited for it, and I hope you've been enjoying this playthrough. As a last little sneak peek, as you can see, we've unlocked some mini games. We won't be playing these until after we're done the main game, the main adventure, so I hope you're excited for that as well. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching today's episode on Plants vs. Zombies. If you want to support the video, make sure you comment Zebra Zombies or any watch at the end that you are a Zebra-tastic viewer. Check out more episodes like this one on your screen right now or by subscribing to join the Zebra Herd. By the way, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.